You guys have seen us testing Witcher production on this channel for a while now, and even as fun and cool as it is, it takes some time setting it up and calibrating it, and even though it's getting quite affordable for those who work with Witcher production, most of us can't afford it or don't see the reason in investing in that equipment. But what if I told you there's another way to do Witcher production which only costs a fraction of what's typical with Witcher production equipment? And it's even faster to calibrate, requires less crew and a smaller setup. It has actually worked pretty well. Yeah. It might actually be so good that we are using it for a big project for a client this year. So join us and see if this is the new revolution of Witcher production. Yeah, mom, I'm on the moon right now, I can't talk. For those of you who doesn't know what Witcher production is, it's basically a way to track the movement and position of the camera, so the digital 3D world you add to your scene moves accordingly to your camera, so you get the right parallax effect and perspective. It makes the 3D world look more real when combining it with your live action video. But this requires quite powerful computers, uh, some expensive equipment, and a lot of work. But this is about to change, thanks to your phone, and some innovative people from a company called Lightcraft. The new phones out there are so powerful that you can do a lot of effects, but it's been a little bit hard to use that power and that effect for filmmaking because it's kind of stuck inside the phone. Uh, until now, because you have a product called Axoon Simo Pro, which uh, costs $300. By combining these two with an app called Jetset Cine, it's said that we can now more easily and faster than ever combine what we shoot with our cinema camera and our 3D software like Blender and make everything stitch, the tracking and everything and uh, create stunning Witcher production uh, scenes. So to see if this is actually true, we're gonna take the risk and actually use this for a new big project we're doing, a children's series, and we are making a pilot episode. Since we have limited time and budget to produce our pilot episode, we were actually not considering using Witcher production for the shoot until we came across Lightcraft at NAB. By the way, the reason why we were at NAB is quite special and we will show you in the next video coming out very soon. At the Lightcraft booth at NAB, we were so impressed with their new app called Jetset Cine. It could track the camera in real time, flawlessly. Uh, it could key out people using AI even. And it has so many features. Auto sync, the tracking with your footage into Blender or any other 3D software, it's up to you. And all these things made us think, hmm, is this something we could use for this project? Well, it was worth a try. The children's series we are making is called Moneland, or Moonland in English. And we were asked to produce a pilot episode, also meaning a test episode, to potentially get funding to produce the whole series. The series is about an old man who's tired of living on this planet, so he builds a space rocket to get to the moon. But just before the launch, his granddaughter, Julia, sneaks onto the rocket without him knowing and she ends up living with him on the moon. There they meet some interesting aliens, they create music with them and learn about science. So we are building the moon and the space rocket and the UFOs and the whole universe in 3D in Blender. And we're gonna use the Witcher production to put our real people who are filming and green screen into that world. But we also wanted to build interior of the spaceship and this is gonna be real life in our studio. So who isn't better to build this than <laughs> Two pieces of bread with brown cheese. 15 minute break to watch Nate forge. 2,400 tea bags. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah, new project. Now it's actually a real project for a client. Yeah. So you have some budget there. I know. I'm yeah. gonna rinse it all, buy so many tools. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a shop list now and it's nice to know where the couch is gonna be, where the bed is <laughs> gonna be, the windows and everything. One thing is to make a shot list, but also that we have a floor plan like this so we can know where the camera is seeing it from a boat. You can also go in here and uh, you can pretend you are inside the spaceship. <laughs> it's the same yeah. stuff we use to design the office, isn't it? Yeah, sweet home 3D. <laughs> While Aaron was building, we had to prepare the Witcher production part with Jetset. 
As I was directing this series, Matthias was responsible for the ritual production part and get to know the Jet Set app. Do I say my name? Like, I guess there's going to be the... Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. okay, so the first tests with the Jet Set app was uh, really fun. <laughs> <laughs> you just import a 3D scene and then basically it works already. Oh, it was so cool to see on the Jet Set app when you're moving the camera around, how it was actually moving the whole 3D world as well. It's very responsive. It's crazy. So it looked like we were walking inside a 3D world. That was really impressive. I'm just crossing my finger and hope that this will work well for our production. Because if it does, this is a game changer. I mean, this is a very cheap solution, like relatively speaking. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried that is it gonna be accurate enough for an actual production? Which shot uh, did you have a question about? I was thinking about the intro shot when they walk out of the spaceship. Could you, could you maybe just try if you go... Just walk towards me now. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Something like that, maybe? I don't know if you have any idea. Low dolly shot. So when they oh. walk out... Yeah, that could be cool as well, and then we add lots of smoke. So, Morten has made this rocket, and he made some presets. So we have uh, different presets, we can test out different angles already now. We don't need too much movement here, I think. No. They will just walk through the smoke, and start singing. <laughs> and the smoke has to be added in, in post. We can't combine smoke and green screen. But then it's a good thing we get a depth map from the the Jet Set app, because then we can use the depth map to make them actually come out of the oh, smoke. Yeah. So that's quite genius. Like here we don't have a green screen, but you actually we can use ourselves to test uh, the movements of the characters. Oh, that's so cool! The, the whole of the moon and everything is just 3D. And it's a little bit hard sometimes to imagine how it's gonna look. We can do a lot of static shots, but at the same time it's just oh, it's so cool when I look at the moving shots. Yeah, no, just to you know, also exaggerate, you know, with the moving camera, we can really like push in and, and see the wow effect of being on the moon. But the question is, should it be the crane, dolly, handheld, steady cam? Let's look at it. That's why we're planning now. Because in August, we're gonna film this and then the actors are coming, you know, they booked the time. We only have two weeks to shoot. This has to be prepared. So really good that we can use the app to figuring out the 3D scenes now. Okay, so I just opened the AutoShot app, which is the software that syncs all the data with the Jet Set app. I don't understand any of it, so. The, the buttons are not called what you maybe expect. So you need to like, you need to get to know the app to know what is doing what and where to find what you need. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you, here's Matthias as well. Hey. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, let's calibrate a lens. So we're basically gonna do a little bit of photogrammetry. Do you guys have anything like a carpet with a bunch of, you know, a bunch of geometric detail? You're gonna be moving around that carpet. And so what that is, is a pixel map representation. Let's uh, let's set our origins. It was really nice to get a, get a run through of how everything works. We're gonna, we're gonna do a quick scan of the set. This step is really critical. And uh, the test was going really nice. We were getting some shots and everything went uh, well. But then the phone started overheating. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're in the red on the temperature. And that caused a lot of problems. Phone's getting hot. And then what it's doing is it's, it's throttling the GPU speed. This is why we want to do this now. <laughs> you know, first run, find out what's, what's going what's gonna to have, have problems. Um, now, uh, we had an error where it didn't detect the timing offsets. So as soon as this is, is done crunching, I'm going to show you guys how to zip up a take and send it to me. Because I want to look at that and understand what, what didn't work. So uh, we needed... Uh... We need to fix that problem. So Matthias, putting on the cooler. Yeah. That helped? Yeah, helped a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, because this is a lot better. This is super accurate actually. It's crazy, just one thing added and everything gets sold. I 
That's actually worked pretty well. Yeah, now I set it to green screen. I'm standing on the trap. Green tape? Should we try? Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, you can't see. It's the next video. So what we're doing now is we're putting uh, some tracking markers on the green screen. It's nice to have some extra, extra markers just to make sure that we get a perfect track. Okay, so we're shooting this on the Canon C300. We chose to use that because it has Canon RAW, really high quality image for keying. And we can also use it for really good high quality slow motion. Because we're going to use that to make them look like they're in low gravity. So they're going to be jumping in 100 FPS. And then it's going to look like they're in a low gravity uh, environment. Not needing to have ropes in the ceiling will save us a lot of time because I would be scared putting ropes hanging people from the ceiling. So it's good to see that this might work. It outputs the video signal from the Canon into the Axun Simo Pro. And then from that, the video output into the phone. So you can use this as a, as a monitor, but we're, we're using it to transmit the camera signal into the phone. So the Jet Set app can actually compare the, the phone's camera and the actual uh, cinema camera and then figure out where the camera is in 3D space so that it can offset the tracking that it's doing so you get the right camera placement in 3D space. Uh, and then also the CMO Pro actually also outputs a 5 volt uh, signal into, into the cooler that we're using, which is a very important part of this rig. So then you get both power to the phone and to the cooler. We bought a small rig cage and then we get a really rigid uh, solution for for the phone so it doesn't move at all uh, through the shoot which is really important because the phone has to stay in the exact same place for it to be properly calibrated all the time test green screen director to sync up the footage you have to open auto shot and then open web page and that that's going to bring you to a digital slate that's synced up with the jet set app just on the network you're on nice and easy way to do it you just press record on the camera on jet set it flashes and you're synced boom okay <laughs> looks so high tech are you still a uh, pessimistic or no I, I mean i think it will work the the worst part is actually the the lighting since it's like full body green screen and i'm actually more worried about that <laughs> And the moon only have one light source, and that's yeah. the sun. And of course, the sun might reflect into the rocket, and you have some reflections. But it's a little bit different than the Earth. Yeah. So we need it's to a very hard light, but we yeah. need big soft, soft. lights for yeah. the green screen. But we need a hard light, on the, and we need to catch the shadow. So, we'll so that, that's a challenge we're gonna have in the next uh, in the next video. So this is kind of a mix between old ways of doing rich production and new ways. Like you have, the new way you have actually, you can see live what you are recording. So you can find your angle live on set, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, that's really nice. You could actually now start using this for pre-production. So we can start using and find angles uh, for the 3D scene. Yeah, that's really nice. And that you have an uh, old way, like you have the tracking and you have, uh, okay, you need to fine tune it. But that was the same with the Cypher Street. Like we had to fine tune yeah. it afterwards because it was, it, is, it takes a little bit of time in post. It's not like you just quickly get it in and then everything is done. We are using the Jet Set Cine version, which is more professional, so you have more features. But uh, it's a free version as well, which you can test out. And keep in mind that this is just the first test we're doing. After summer, we probably know a lot more about it and that we are prepared for the shoot. Uh, so stay tuned. It's coming out in a couple of months, I think. First, we have summer vacation. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> subscribe, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.